It's Madden NFL 22 on EA Sports. And we've got a showdown in the AFC West. It's the Broncos and the Chiefs. And it's coming up next on EA Sports. It is perhaps the best home field advantage in all of football and certainly the loudest as we welcome you inside Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. A few short moments ago, these two teams made their way out of the Arrowhead Stadium tunnels and the noise level in this place was just about off the charts. They're set for football as the Chiefs get set to do battle with the Denver Broncos. Brandon Gordon alongside my good friend Charles Davis. Now Charles, so often it's the quarterbacks that are in the spotlight, and in this game, no different. We have a very compelling matchup. Teddy Bridgewater of the Broncos, Patrick Mahomes of the Chiefs. We do indeed, and something I'm going to be watching for, who can get off to a fast start? If you can go out, get points on the first drive, preferably a touchdown, you can really set the tone for the game. And I think that both of these quarterbacks are more than capable of doing just that. Here's the kicker, Harrison Butker, ready to get this one started. And we are underway from Kansas City. Taken at the goal line. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. And the Denver offense ready to take over for the first time. Get a look at their eighth-year quarterback. His first season as a Bronco, though, Teddy Bridgewater. I've always loved Teddy Bridgewater. A lot of people have underrated him throughout his career. Remember, this is a guy who's battled back from a horrendous knee injury to find his way back as a starter in this league. More than capable right arm. Tremendous leader. This guy knows how to make plays in the clutch. First down throw for Bridgewater. Escaping the pressure right. And oh, right away, he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Chiefs. And they take over already five yards deep into the red zone at the 15-yard line. Patrick Mahomes now in his fifth season with the Chiefs, ready to bring out this high-powered Kansas City offense for the first time. And so often when you've stolen a possession, as they just did there, on the first play, first play, picking up the fumble, the natural inclination is to attack, go after them big. Sometimes what you just want to do is put the ball in the hands of one of your best players in one of their favorite plays and establish your dominance that way. Opening minute and already a trip to the red zone. They've got a first and 10 at the 15. They'll run for the first time with Clyde Edwards Alaire. He takes us down to about the. Now here's Mahomes. Caught out left side by Robinson. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight yard line. It'll go as a loss on the play. Not what you need down here. It's going to be second and goal. Heck of a play there to get to him quickly and get him down for a loss. I think they did a really nice job getting ready for this game, scouting, watching film, and understanding defensively what the play design was. It's second and goal. Back to the eight-yard line now. to throw it's Mahomes to the right side it's Kelsey and they'll get this from the eight to the five pick up a three and there's a completion to the tight end and look at the size of these players nowadays at that spot six four six five and up 
A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And he's got his man in stride, complete. A four-yard pickup, not enough, fourth down. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. The offense is staying out there. Here we go on fourth and goal from the one. They'll go. It's Edwards Alaire. And not only will he not get in, he's going to lose yardage. They stuff him back at the four. They stop him up short on fourth and goal from the one. And the Bronco defense comes up big. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah, yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> They'll start the drive with a run by Gordon. They find some open field here. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. The 71 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. I don't think that's what the defensive coordinator had in mind there. You got him pinned back inside the five, and then you let him rip off that long run. You're already anticipating the film session, aren't you? There's going to be some anger. Yeah, it's not going to be at the greatest hits, is it? Because they didn't hit anyone on that play. Supposed to have them pinned back deep. Instead, they leave a big crack, a gaping hole, and guess what? They're in a bad position right now. Much more room to operate under after the big play. Here's first and ten. Play action now. Bridgewater. And incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. To throw is Bridgewater. And he's taken down, a chief sack. Chris Jones in there to get him yet again. That is his third sack tonight. They can't figure him out. My oh man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. Third and long now after the sack. And we'll see if Bridgewater has a response. They'll set up a throw. And pressure coming, and they got him once again. Melvin Ingram providing a little deja vu back-to-back -back sacks, and now they're staring at a fourth and long. I don't know what else can be said about this pass rush. They have been sensational. CD, that is now six sacks for them. And how many times do we talk to offensive coordinators and they say a sack is a result of everyone on offense not doing their job? But let's be honest about this one. This is the offensive line unable to counter the pass rush. They've been teeing off all game long. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. He's going to air one out. And that is incomplete. The Broncos unable to convert here on fourth. And the Chiefs will have the football back in excellent field position. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game.
They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. The UCLA product, Kenny Young, had the tackle. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Chiefs in possession of the ball as we welcome you back. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. It's a four-yard pickup there, and it leaves him with third and five. On any running, so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. It's caught on the right side by Robinson. And the Chiefs are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way and worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. They probably don't need to run a play here, but you wonder if they're going to be able to resist on first and goal. They'll run with Edwards Alaire. And this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. And that's exactly what offenses try to avoid by using motion and throwing different formations up. They hate when he can draw a bead on the play, get a running start and make a big play behind the line of scrimmage as he did just there. So this one in the win column for Kansas City. And this was truly a total team effort, Charles, on both sides of the ball. Well, they absolutely pitched a shutout, so it can't get much better than that, right? The defense led the way, but the offense did their part as well. They moved the ball up and down the field. So you've got to like what you saw. What do they call that? A total team effort? I think when it's time to hand out game balls, guys from both sides will end up getting one.